when Theresa May spoke at the Conservative Party conference of reigniting the British dream, my hope was that her talk would lead to urgent action. Research by the London School of Economics reveals diversity and social mobility has ground to a halt. Only 4% of doctors, 6% of barristers, 11% of journalists and 12% of solicitors come from working class backgrounds. These are all my contemporaries, yeah? Let me see. Oh, here I am! My journey and my experiences have given me the opportunity to take a 360 degree view on this issue. Sadly, my story is far from the norm, but I believe that we can all be beneficiaries if we do diversify. Recently, the government released its race disparity audit, and as welcome as that was, and we know the problems, the thing that I found depressing was that there wasn't any solutions offered. I've come back to East London, where I grew up, to show how I feel my story represents social mobility when it's done right. I'm here at my school, Connaught School for Girls, which is an ordinary state school, but what it did have was aspiration. Our schools should be a microcosm of society. At Connaught, we came from diverse socio-economic backgrounds, but we all knew the best was expected from us, and we strove to achieve it. Hey. Good to see you. Good to yeah. see you. You didn't do GCSE textiles, did no, you? No, I didn't. In you were the good end. in the lower school. I was good in the, the lower school. school. Connell's progress levels are continuously well above the national average. Alumni include Sharon White, head of Ofcom, and Team GB Olympic athlete Asha Phillips. All this from a school where 33% of its student body receives free meals. Sally Walker originally taught at Connaught in the 80s and returned three years ago as head teacher. So how do you think in terms of social mobility? Because really, schools like this are the first stop. It's here that someone's mind is shaped to expect bigger possibilities than necessarily their background would ordinarily allow. We really just like through our curriculum, through our pastoral work, through our assembly program, by by talking to girls as you walk around the school in the playground. You know, we will make them believe that they can succeed through hard work. You do have to work with them, but the world is your oyster, and you can go out there and do something for yourself. I believe creating a diverse, upwardly mobile workforce that fully reflects every demographic has to begin in the classroom. When you look at the outcomes that have been able to happen in this very small community, these are the sorts of examples the government should be looking to replicate and scale throughout the country. Paulette White has lived on the Cathal estate in London's East End for six years. At night and you walk around in the corridors, half of them ain't got no lights. It's really dark, especially by the lifts. Paulette is not alone in despising the squalor of this 20-year-old estate, a relic of the 1960s. It's not just education. How we live is also a key factor in social mobility. I was raised in the 80s on the Cat Hall housing estate at a time when people like us felt neglected and forgotten by the state. Paradoxically, the scheme to patch up the estate is just £30 million less than knocking it down and starting again. Despite the government decision blocking that, residents, councillors and architects alike say they'll continue with their uniquely close relationship and fight on. This is the former site of Cat Hall Estate. Now, when I was growing up here, it was one of the roughest housing estates in East London. It was torn down in the early noughties and replaced with what you see now. Again, an example of social mobility done right when you raise the living standards of the poor. You had them last week, you know what they're all about. Anybody want a bit? The close-knit and diverse community I experienced as a child in Walthamstow helped shape my sense of belonging and also provided a support network. When I was growing up, this was the hub of the community. The market store holders were mainly white working class survivors of the Second World War. They were community minded and they welcomed diversity and families like mine. Walthamstow has changed considerably over the last 30 years. Globalization and gentrification have meant that the incomes that these market store holders once earned are no longer what they were. And unfortunately, the community cohesion that I experienced growing up no longer exists either. 
Do you think people still mix like they did but, before? But no, before was English. Yes. Yes. And you have no space even to walk the street. Yes. Yeah, but no, I think no English people in no. the market. No English. All people. Asian, Turkish, yes. Indian. That's it. No English. No English. No English. Why do you think there's no English? It's the main things because you know the houses prices is going up. They sell the property and they go different town. My friends from nearby, there must have been 20 of them just in this little area here that have all gone because they can't make ends meet. It's very tough, very, very tough. They're all gone. All gone. They just now stand here and just wait for people to come up how much, and they ask how much it is. And a lot of them, unfortunately, have to do sign language because they can't speak English. English. Social inequality needs to be tackled by our institutions with the same vigour that segregation and racism were in the latter decades of the 20th century. We need to charge the arms of our government machinery to work together and more effectively for the common good. And I firmly believe we need an education system that provides a clear pathway of employment, social mobility and financial stability for everyone.